We've had a look at, good look at the eucalyptus model already. So let's just look at the soils. Um, going into a bit of detail there. You can, there are a couple of different ways to specify the initial water content at the start of the simulation. And by the way, you may not, you may decide to start the simulation uh, quite a period of time before you actually sow the, uh, plant the crop uh, of trees. Um, but nevertheless, um, it, you know, you can specify uh, initial soil water content. Soil physics are um, defined in this model. So first of all, you can define as number of, as many soil horizons or depths, uh, let's not call them horizons, depths uh, that you like. Um, um, and each of those, uh, you can specify the particle size distribution and, and rock content. I haven't worked with those, but particularly having a rock content sounds like a very useful thing to have there. Um, bulk density, uh, air dried water content, likewise the water contents at uh, 15 bar drained upper limit and saturation. You can specify a KSAT value if you like. Uh, if not, I'll show you the other option in a moment, which is more commonly used. Um, and um, But for each plant that's specified, whether it's eucalyptus or a weed or another tree or something, uh, there'll be a lower limit to which that can draw the soil moisture content down to. Um, also the um, <clears throat> KL value, which is the proportion of available water in that depth that can be withdrawn for uptake each day. So no, in this case, no more than 7% 7, 7 of the available water can be taken up in any one day at the surface and 1% down at depth. Uh, the XF factor uh, is a value between 0, 1 and 1, which indicates the accessibility to tree root, to roots of that plant uh, speed, plant type. Uh, and then there's a calculation of, of plant available water content at each depth and a visual representation of that as well. Um, if you don't have KSAT, um, then you, you're going to be relying on this SW con value, which is very commonly used, which indicates the proportion of water above saturation uh, that can be drained in any one day. Um, so this that sets the drainage characteristics of the profile if you haven't used a KSAT value. You can also have lateral um, movement of water uh, specified by the KLAT value. Um, uh, what else? Uh, so that's basically water. Um, you can you also need to specify the organic components. Um, so for all those soil depths, uh, carbon concentration and the C2N ratio. <clears throat> then there are a couple of parameters that have been measured to some extent in very few systems. Uh, but these become sort of tuning parameters for nitrogen. It's the proportion of carbon that is in microbial biomass and the proportion that's inert in the system. So you can um, you can make the carbon and nitrogen in the system run very, very lean or, or uh, very readily available by changing those parameters there. So they are significant soil tuning parameters. Um, likewise, back for water, back in you know, the, and really are all of these parameters measured for any system. Um, and even where they are, there's always error in whatever measurements are provided. So all of these parameters can come into tuning in um, the soil parameters. Um, to organic matter, chemical. Yeah, well, just just, just yep. before you go on with that, yep. um, not, notwithstanding that many of those parameters are not going to be available. Um, well, some of those parameters won't be available even for our highly measured calibration sites. Yeah, um, and we'll have to deem, deem them. Um, and for the, the bulk of the data that we might choose to see how well we simulate for, um, we'll have to pick up values from, uh, well, I, I won't say the literature, but from um, some nas national layers, soil layers, and, and for, either by soil type or some other things that we can um, 
pulls the values out of. Having said that, is it is it possible to effectively create a database of alternatives of, of all those parameters that are required to run the model? Um, yep. To generate a simulation, do you, do you need to present here, please simulate this site and get the site again, all other things being equal, but I want to change the routing depth or I want to change um, you know, the case set and something, something like that. Is that is that easily affected using AppSim or, or is, it, is it you have to? Yeah, it's, it's yeah. and I've, I've preempted you a little bit here by uh, if you right click on that plantation uh, node of the simulation you're given the option to um, you can see download a soil so that can come you, you specify the latitude and longitude anywhere in the world and it'll work out um, where from where it'll uh, I don't know where that location is actually negative 30 well it's in Australia probably 150 oh it'd be in Brazil no, no, it's Coffs Harbour, of course. Um, so for that location, we're given a couple of options. There's the uh, Soil and Landscape Grid of Australia, or we can get it from the International Service in the Netherlands. Um, and it gives you a sample of some of the differences here. Now, the USRIG database is drawn from the Australian database, so there should, there should be a lot of similarity there but they would have done perhaps some different uh, Kriegings and, and interpolations. Um, yeah, so, so are you saying that the Soil Landscape Grid of Australia yeah. has, is populated with those variables needing, needed to run an AppSim simulation? Yep, it, it, I won't do it now, but it, it, it takes about, you know, five seconds to download the file and you've got that soil represented in your simulation here and you can run it there and then. But usually I treat that only as an approximation uh, if you've got some better updates on that information. For example, for forestry, uh, well, all of these databases will only go, I think, to a maximum of 10 meters, two meters depth. Yeah. So for forestry, we, we want to add some uh, different depths to that. But, you know, if, if you don't have anything better, these are a good starting point uh, and can get you going. We use that sort of system, uh, gridded, uh, the crops, crop work in, well, I'm doing it in Ethiopia and other parts of East Africa currently. Um, there are systems, you know, this is a one file at a time option here, but there are ways to set that up to do it um, gridded across a, a land surface. Um, and if we, the vision for Australian forestry, I think, is to have a gridded system or some other, it doesn't have to be gridded, it can be modified grids and, and those, you know, a, a distribution of points across the Australian plantation forestry estate uh, where we have this information already accessible, suitable for trees, like deep soils, uh, rocks, for example, um, that can be imported, you know, within a few seconds into these uh, simulations. And to run whole gridded land surfaces, you probably wouldn't do it in this system here you, you'd set up a, an R or a Python script to iteratively run those options and uh, using the cloud is an option there already um, but there are other ways to do it as well uh, without even opening opening up this GUI, GUI system. Um, Thanks Phil. That, uh, and likewise for weather, you can also download weather from uh, as a single a file at a time, um, uh, specifying your latitude and longitude, either getting it from the World Weather System, which is NASA and CHIRPS, or the Australian system through SILO. Uh, and if those systems are operating, and usually they are, but sometimes NASA is down a bit more frequently than SILO, um, It'll, there'll be a bit of delay or you'll get a nonsense file and you just have to try again a bit later. Um, specify the time frame. For silo, you can go back to, not, well, at least 1900. You know, the approximations back to then, I think for all sites in Australia. Um, for NASA power and, and CHIRP sites, it's back to, I think, 1980. Uh, we can go back, so yeah, that's pretty handy. 
Uh, and likewise, if you want to do multiple sites, you you, you run a, an R or a Python script to uh, bring those data into a gridded system.